Hi, Nick with Zingtree here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to integrate Zingtree with your Salesforce account. Integrating Zingtree will allow your agents to launch scripts directly from Salesforce objects. It also allows for two-way data transfer, which means Salesforce object data can be displayed in the agent script. Data gathered in Zingtree can instantly update Salesforce. And with pause and resume, all of the data collected is retained when cases are transferred from person to person. When a Salesforce record is reopened, the associated script picks up where it left off. The first thing you'll need to do is install the Zingtree app. Start by pulling up the Salesforce How to Integrate article from the Zingtree Help Center. You'll find that article linked below. Once in the article, go to the Installing the App subsection and click one of the two package download options. Clicking either the Production or Sandbox links will redirect you to a Salesforce install page. You'll find three options, Install for Admins Only, Install for All Users, and Install for Specific Profiles. We recommend using the Install for All Users option because it will save you from having to set up user permissions later. Once you've chosen your install option, tick the checkbox acknowledging that you are installing a non-Salesforce app and then click Install. You'll see a pop-up asking you to approve third-party access for Zingtree. The installation may take a few minutes, but you'll get a confirmation email from Salesforce once it's completed and you'll see this screen. Click on Done to be redirected to the Installed Packages screen. You'll now see Zingtree as an available app. Next, we'll need to configure Zingtree's global parameters. In Salesforce, choose the Zingtree app and then choose Zingtree Configuration. The host name will always be https colon forward slash forward slash zingtree.com. We'll need to get your Zingtree API key by logging into your Zingtree account and choosing Account Settings, Organizations and Billing, API and Data. Copy your API key and then paste it in Salesforce. The org-wide tree ID is the default tree that opens in every case unless it's overridden at the object or record level. We'll cover how the override works a bit later in this video. To find the tree ID, go back to Zingtree and open the tree you'd like to use from the My Trees menu. Choose the Publishing dropdown and click Publishing Links. The tree ID is the string of numbers at the end of the publishing URL. Copy the tree ID and paste it in the org-wide field in Salesforce. Click Submit when you're done. If you didn't previously choose the Install for All Users option, then you'll need to assign permission sets to your users. Only a Salesforce administrator can manage permissions, so begin by verifying that you are logged in to an administrator account. Next, we're going to navigate to Setup and make sure we're on the Home tab. From there, we'll go to Administration, Users, Permission Sets. Scroll down the menu until you find Zingtree User and click it. Select Manage Assignments and then Add Assignments. From here, you can assign the users who need access to your trees. You can add a tree to any object layout. To do this, go to Setup and then Object Manager. From the list of objects, choose which you'd like to modify. In this example, I'm going to add a tree to a case object. After selecting Case, I choose Lightning Record Pages and then click Case Record Page. Select the Edit button. From the list of components on the left, search for Zingtree. From here, it's as simple as dragging the Zingtree Agent Script component to where you want it in your case layout. As I mentioned previously, you can override the global tree ID from the object level. To do that, click the Zingtree component in the layout, and then in the menu on the right, paste your new tree ID into the tree ID field. Two-way data transfer between Zingtree and Salesforce relies on simple field mapping between data fields and buttons in Zingtree and the API names of the fields in Salesforce. Let's look at a scenario to see how this applies. Say your customers are calling in because they need help with their mobile device. You want your agent to ask what device the customer has and update a custom field in Salesforce called product from a button click in your agent script. To set this up, I'll start by going to the Salesforce setup menu, then choosing case under object manager. 
From the menu on the left, I'll choose Fields and Relationships. Here I see a list of all the fields in my case object. Scrolling down, I can see the field name for product is product double underscore C. The C means this is a custom field in this object. Please note, the use of the double underscore here is important for custom fields. If you use only a single underscore when adding the custom field name to Zingtree, information won't be passed back to Salesforce. Now that I've copied the field name, I'll go into my script in Zingtree. You can see that I have two buttons, one for iPhone and one for Android. I'm going to tick the box next to variable to set on button click, and then type SF single underscore and paste in the field name from Salesforce. Now when your agents are using this script and click one of the device buttons, the product name will automatically be updated with the device name you've added into the score slash value field of your tree. Our example here is using button click variables, but this works with data entry field variables as well. Notice the same product variable is being used on the next node and is now generating the name of the selected product in the Zingtree script. We've shown a custom field here, but the same process can be used for updating standard Salesforce fields. Before we move to our next example, we need to dive a little further into API field names, specifically the lookup data field types, since you may run into errors trying to configure these field names with Zingtree. You can reference objects one connection deep via lookup fields, but not via related lists. The process for returning information is slightly different depending on if you're using a standard Salesforce field or a custom field. In our case object, we've sorted by data type and are looking at the API field names for the lookups. Scrolling down to contact name, we see the API field name is contact ID. Contact name is a standard Salesforce field. Looking above it, we see lead name and the API field name is lead ID double underscore C. Remember that the double underscore C in this case means it's a custom field we've created. When calling the API field name of a lookup data type in your Zing tree for a standard Salesforce field like contact ID, you'll need to drop the word ID from the end of the field name. For example, if we're trying to surface the contact name, instead of typing SF underscore contact ID as a Zing tree variable, we type SF underscore contact instead, and then hyphen name. SF underscore contact is where we want to look for the information, and hyphen name is what we want returned. When you're surfacing a custom lookup field like lead name, you don't need to drop ID, but you will need to make a change to the C at the end of the field name. To surface the lead name in our tree, we type SF underscore lead ID, double underscore R. Notice the C gets changed to R and then hyphen name. Again, the SF lead ID double underscore R is where we are looking and hyphen name is the information we're returning. Let's surface the contact name for this account in our tree. Open your tree in Zing tree and then select variables from the information menu. Click add predefined variable. Using the naming scheme for lookup fields we just went through, we're going to type in SF underscore contact hyphen, name, and save the variable. Now when you type in a hashtag, you'll see suggestions for all the variables you defined. Choose the fields you'd like to have populated. When we return to our case in Salesforce, we can see the account contact name Taylor Smith is automatically populated in our tree. Let's look at one final lookup field example. We want our agent to confirm that the number Taylor is calling in about is the number in the contact object. Here in our case object, you see that Taylor Smith's contact number doesn't exist. But if we look at the contact object, we see the number. To surface the number in our script, we're going to look at the fields and relationships in our contact object and copy the API field name for phone. In Zingtree, we create the predefined variable SF underscore contact hyphen and then paste in phone. Going into our script, we'll add the question, can you please confirm your number is, and then insert the variable we just created. Returning to our script in the Salesforce case, we see the number is being surfaced for the agent. 
Now that you've got the basics down, you'll be able to leverage Zingtree to streamline your agent's workflow and empower them to be experts. If you have further questions, we'd love to hear from you. Happy building.